And the best surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has preserved for this and for this message is Surah Al-Hujrat. And in Surah Al-Hujrat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about a lot of social etiquette and ethics, how we should behave in with other people, how you give rights of Allah, rights of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and how you give rights of other people. So inshallah, bismillah, we will delve, we will go into it. And hopefully you can make mental notes. And these are things we need to bring in ourselves. And you will realize, like myself, like, you know, I was discussing with my, before this too, like with my sister, I'm like, we do this so much and we're so careless about it. And last one, there are some of the things that we do, in fact, are major sin in, sin in Islam. You know, among, you know, we think, when we think of major sins, we think of zina, we think of adultery, we think of alcohol. These, some of them are equal to that as well. They regarded a major sin. So inshallah, we will get started. Um, also, if anyone would like to occupy, uh, would like to sit up, they can sit up too. Okay, or if new people come, just you can make them sit up on the sofa, inshallah. Right? We will start, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> So Surah Al-Hujurat, so inshallah we're not going, we're not doing a detailed tafsir of the surah. We selected ayat that we will uh, focus on given the time that we have. Uh, so Surah Al-Hujurat, uh, it was revealed after Surah Al-Mujadila. Okay, in the Quran, this is a surah after Surah Al-Fat, uh, you know, but the Quran, as we know, is not, it's not uh, compiled according to how the surahs were revealed. Rather, the compilation of the Quran is based on what Allah SWT informed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this compilation of the Quran. So of course, Surah Fatiha is not the first surah. Surah Baqarah is not the second surah that was revealed. Okay, it is the arrangement of the surahs are according to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed uh, um, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the time of Uthman, Uthman radiallahu anhu, the, the Khalifa, the Sahabi, you know, it was compiled in a, in a, in a shape of a mushaf. This is just extra information. So, uh, so, Hujrat or Hujar or, uh, or hit, uh, the, uh, Hujra means a closed compound, okay? Uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a place they, that has walls and compound. And in symbolic, you can, you can also take as boundaries. How as believers, you know, there are certain boundaries. There are certain hudud, there are certain limits we have to follow when it comes to our relationship with Allah relationship with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with uh, with other people okay so at about the akhlaq so it's surah surah al-hujrat is also called the surah of etiquette the surah of akhlaq and adab okay so uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said really the most complete of believers in iman are those with the best character and who are most kind to their families Okay, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, a believer does not insult others, does not curse others, is not vulgar in their speech, and is not shameless. Okay, so be, um, a believer is modest, a believer has modesty, not in just the way they dress and the way they behave, but also in the words, and of course, the modesty of the heart, the shyness of the heart, where a person is shy in committing sins in front of Allah, even if the person is alone, there there's a haya of the heart, where you know you know that Allah is watching you. So here we're gonna focus on three things in this surah. And number one is the the rights of Allah, the rights of Rasulullah sallam, and the people. So I number one of Surah Al Hujurat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, O those who believe. So another thing is important is in the Quran, a lot of the times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addresses the believers saying, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu. So when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whenever believers, whenever people are addressed with this, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, 
Okay, firstly, people should pay, pay close attention because either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us something that is going to be beneficial or he's going to stop us from something that is not beneficial for us, that is harmful for us. Okay, so and again, number two, when Allah SWT says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, you call people by their qualities. Like, oh, beautiful one, you know, oh, uh, you know, honest one. You know, you call people by different, you know, different names. And for a believer, the best name that they can get is, oh, believers, the one with Iman, the one who has Iman in their hearts. So here Allah SWT says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, la tuqaddimu bayna yadayillahi wa rasulihi. Do not cross, tuqaddim, qadam, qadam means your footsteps or you stand. So do not cross or do not go ahead okay be in front of allah and in front of rasul now people might ask what do you mean by going ahead of allah okay so let's just go on that going ahead of allah means that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us something you know last one has given command in the quran he's our creator right he's our rab He's the one who nourish, nourishes us. He provides for us. He He's the one who created us. He put us on this in this world, right? So what does it mean to go ahead of Allah is when you think you know what's better for you and you don't follow the command that Allah has given or you question it. Yeah, there's a difference between understanding the command of Allah, asking questions versus outright denying it. Okay, and outright denying it, be like, you know what, it doesn't make sense to me. Or some, th those are two different things. Of course, uh, as believer, we have to seek knowledge. We have to go to people who have knowledge and understand, you know, get the correct information. But at the same time, we cannot be disrespectful and be like, no, you know, it's, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't, I'm not going to do it. Or I'm just not going to take the knowledge because if I get to know something, I will have to follow it. You know, some people like to stay ignorant because when they get to know information or they get to know the commands of Allah, they think, oh, I'll have to follow it now. So I'd rather not even study the Quran. So this is what it means to when a person goes ahead of Allah, okay, meaning you think you, your desires, your thought process, like for example, you know, Allah SWT, like a small example when Allah SWT said that, you know, the relationship of two people uh, of opposite gender is through marriage. Be like, oh, this is, but this doesn't make sense. Like, I need to get to know that person. How will I spend my life without even knowing this person? I have to spend some time with him. Or if it's a male, I have to spend some time alone with her. I need to get to know them for five years, 10 years, something. And then sometimes I need to live with them to see. You know, you have your own ideas and thought processes. When your creator knows best for you, right? You know, no matter how much, and you know, it's tried and tested by people who are married. Then no matter how much you know a person before marriage, you really don't know them, right? You know them and you live with them. And living also is not out, even out of wedlock. It's still not the same thing because, you know, with the contract, with the nikah comes responsibilities. Even if you're living with someone who you're not married to, it's not the same thing. You're not going to get a feel of the marriage. So here, I lost my, this, so this is just one example. Okay, or I'll do this, or I'll dress up in this way, or I'll do this. Sometimes. Yes, uh, we live in a society which encourages to, encourages us to question a lot, and but we live in a society that encourages encourages us to question way too much. Actually, then a person is even required. Even the professors, universities stop people at certain point with the questions because they know people will learn eventually, right? So here, when Allah's command comes, so what did the Sahabas do? Samiana, I hear, wa atana, and I obey. I hear and obey. And it does not mean that it's going to be easy. It's going to be hard. Yeah, we are, some of the commands of Allah and each one of us are different. For some of us, like dressing up a certain way, modesty is not a hard thing, but other things are hard. And for some of us, like other things might be easy. And you know, so each one of us, it does not mean that following the command, this is why the this world is a test for a believer. Test means what? If everything in the test is easy, it's going to be easy? No. So here, so it means going ahead, having your own opinion and following. So how many times in the day, just think about it, us like ourselves, how many times in a day we go ahead of Allah in different matters? And I think there are too many actually, where it'd be like, nah, you know, I'll pray after I finish my work. I'll do this after, 
or I'll do this later, or I won't do it, or I'll do this when I'm this age. I'll follow this right now. So you have your own opinion and desire, okay, before placed before Allah. And then secondly, uh, what about Rasulihi? Wa Rasulihi? Baina yadihi Allahi, yadihi Allahi wa Rasulihi. And what about crossing, going ahead of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So for example, the sunnah of Rasulullah, right? Either sometimes we just say, oh, it's just a sunnah. And how many times? I'll pay the word, but it's just a sunnah. So when we have the attitude that whatever we 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 learn, we know of the Prophet, we say, ah, it's just, it's just a nothing. You know, it's 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 not fard, it's just like that. Or how is it? Why should I do like, you know, uh three times I will I should wash my hands in wudu? Why can't I do like what what's the point? Why should I enter the washroom with my left foot? And then you know, so when you have these why I should do it, basically putting your desires again but in front of the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then it also means self-righteousness sometimes. When you do more than the Rasulullah, you know, I am going to pray the whole night. No, Rasulullah did not pray the whole night. He slept for a part of the night. Or I am going to, you know, stay like this. You know, some people are very, very, very self-righteous. But this, this is a part of arrogance. Are you more righteous than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And from this, uh, from this, uh, I like to uh, bring in a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu narrated, a group of three men came to the houses of the wives of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they asked how uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he worshipped. So, and then they were uh, uh, informed that this is how he worshipped, this is how he prayed, okay? So they thought, okay, he is the Rasul of Allah. He worshiped this much. Maybe that is, that's what he requires to do. And they thought this is insufficient, insufficient for us. Because he's a Rasul, he can get away. We need to do more. So, um, uh, so uh, he, they said, uh, uh, where are we from the Prophet as his past and future sins have been forgiven? Then one of them said, I will offer the prayer throughout the night. I'm not, I'm forever. This is what I'm going to do. The other one said, I will fast throughout the year and I will not break my fast. And the third one said, I will keep away from women and will not get married. Meaning, I will remain a celibate. I will not ever get married. Okay. Then, then uh, Rasulullah came and while they were asking this person and, and then he said, by Allah, I am the most pious to Allah and more afraid of Allah. Meaning, I'm the Rasul of Allah, I'm the final messenger, I'm the most pious. And he said that, yet I fast, but I break my fast, okay? I do sleep, okay? Meaning, in my ibadah, I also sleep, and I also pray for one part of the night. And I also have married women, okay? So, he who does not follow my tradition, he who does not follow my sunnah, he is not from me, okay? From a nuragiba and sunnati, who does not follow my sunnah, he's not from me. So basically, you know, crossing the limit set by, you know, Allah and his Rasul means that also when a person tries to do too much, okay, too much, it's not, you know, what Allah has. That means you're trying to say that the deen of Allah is insufficient. That means Rasul Salam, he lacked in his actions. There needs to be something more. So you have to watch out for that. So it means both things, right? Either you lack, you 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 do not do it, or you overdo it. Okay, so these both things mean in going ahead. Okay, and so Allah Subhanahu wa says they do not go ahead of Rasul Allah and His Rasul. What taqullah? Have the taqwa, have the consciousness of Allah. The only the one who fears Allah, that person, the one who's conscious of Allah, and the one who's who's aware of the akhirah. A lot of times, the, the reason why we continue. We do not change our lifestyle is because we're actually not, we know day of judgment. We're not really in our heart that I'm going to die at any moment and I'm going to leave this world and the world I'm going to go in, it's a permanent world. When we don't have belief in the akhirah, in the hereafter, is when we continue to commit sins. Okay? In Allah, Allah says, Allah is all hearing and all knowing. He's aware of what's in your heart and what you're trying to do. Okay? So this is one command given to the people, okay? And then, uh, so for example, again, uh, different ideas of ibadah, like if if 
you're trying to make seven tawaf around the Kaaba, no, I will do eight. No, that's not righteousness. You have to follow the son of the Prophet. You have to do what he has told you to do. You know, for wudu, zakat, zakat is 2.5. I'm going to give 10% of my wealth. Well, you can do give a lot of sadaqah, as much as sadaqah, you can charity you want, but zakat is this much. Okay, and zakat is this much. You know, you don't overdo it. You, because this is how the deen of Allah has, it's a balanced deen. You have to give right to everyone, to your family, to your, you know, thing. And zakat, there's a reason why zakat is only 2.5% of one's wealth. Okay. So uh, uh, the next one, the next ayah, Allah SWT says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtin nabi. Do not raise your voices in front of the Prophet. Okay, do not raise your uh, uh, your voices in front of the Prophet. And wala tajharu lahu biqawlin tajharin ba'dikum libad. Okay, and do not nor speak loudly to him as you do with one another or your deeds will become void. You don't even realize your deeds will be wasted. Now, what does it mean here? Here, of course, it's also referring to the Sahabas. O Sahabas, in the time of the Prophet do not talk louder than the Prophet. In fact, his voice should be loudest among you. It's a so, it's a form of respect. Okay, it's a form of respect. And do not talk in, to the Sahaba, especially also this command is given. Do not approach and talk to him the way you talk with each other. Very frankly, very chill, no mannerism, you know, like this thing. There's an etiquette. He's a Rasul of Allah. Okay, even the Rasul was the most approachable. Anyone could go and speak with him. But Allah is teaching us certain etiquettes that, that need to be needed to be observed by the Sahabas and who were in this time. Now, how does it apply to us? Okay, so here, for example, number one scenario is when a person goes to, to Medina, to Masjid Nabwi, okay, where Rasulullah, where he's buried, the Rauda, do not raise their voices there. And you know, if anyone has gone for Umrah or Hajj, they know how the scene is there. People are pushing, people are screaming. So the one who has knowledge of this, they will be very respectful. They'll have their voices lowered in that area. Yes, ibadah is not hurting people. In fact, when, when a person was rushing for salah, he was running to cast the salah. Salah is the greatest form of ibadah, but he was rushing and Umar radiallahu anhu, he stopped him. He said, even if you have to cast only one rakah, you slow down because you're harming other people. So speeding, going to sing, you know, pushing people to get your ibadah, this is not allowed in Islam. Okay, then raising your voice in front of the Prophet means in his gathering. Where So for us, in his majalis, where we're learning the sunnah of the Prophet where we are learning about his seerah, about his thing, and people are loud. People are not seated in an in a, in a etiquette. They're not following the proper etiquette. They're talking amongst themselves. And it also means you're arguing about, like, you know, how people indulge in arguments about this hadith, that hadith, this thing, that sunnah, this. Yes, there are even for people should, this is because of lack of knowledge. People are unaware. There are even multiple ways to do one thing. Prophet did not show us that there's only one way of doing one thing. Sometimes he showed us multiple ways of doing things just so that it's easy for the ummah. Right, you know, for example, I was having this, we were having discussion, Isha prayer, right? For example, the Isha prayer, you can pray it at the time of Isha, you can pray it at 10, 10 p.m., you can pray at 12 p.m., uh, 12 a.m., and you can sometimes even go all the way up to the Hajjah, right? So there's no one particular, but people argue, people, and why is it there? It's to accommodate people, right? So some people are this way, you know, some people have they come late from work or whatever. So all of this, but some people, they get stuck on and they start fighting in the majalis and things like that in gatherings. And it gives such a bad, you know, it really takes away from the whole point of learning and it turns our deen and our religion into, you know, something that is so strict, something that's so argumentative. And that's why when people who see from outside, they just run away from deen. This is not the way of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, and also it means to not raise your voices in front of Rasul is honoring his actions, following the sunnah and those who teach his sunnah. So honoring the teachers, honoring the scholars, okay, and having a, you know, surah al-hujrat is surah of etiquettes. So how you speak with your teachers, especially teachers who teach deen, okay, how you honor them. And you know, a lot of the times you're fighting over this sheikh is good and yes, you can have your own favorite teacher. But that does not mean that the other teachers are bad. 
okay? So it's because of our lack of knowledge, we indulge into these things, okay? So here, and then we will skip, inshallah, inshallah, bismillah, we'll skip a certain ayat and go on um, the ayah of, so this is with our, with Allah and with Rasul, okay? And then a bunch of ayahs follow in, inshallah, and we will jump straight on to ayah number six. And this is the first ahkam, is the first uh, command, uh, hukum given to about uh, given to us regarding our dealings with people. Okay, and the first one, last one, I say is, "Ya ayyuha ladina amanu inja akum fasikum binabain watabayyanu." So, if any person comes to you with a news, you know they have something to tell you, watabayyanu, you verify it. This is very important. So, you know, I went. To this thing that thing and i saw this i saw her doing this i saw her seeing this or i saw him doing this what do you do but you verify it okay and uh, so verify it so you do not harm people unknowingly and becoming regretful for what you have done basically do not believe what people come and say to you about other people Okay, what is the etiquette here? You, when someone comes to you with comes to you with news, you investigate. Okay, before passing judgment about someone, especially why? Because it concerns someone's respect. It concerns, you know, it might be about someone's rights, about someone's property, but it could be about something else. Okay, so do not do not believe it, and also do not spread it. Okay, and the Prophet says to them. You know, once he 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 passed by from the from the hadith of the Prophet, once he passed by the graves and he heard, you know, from two graves and he's heard screaming from the graves. You know, he could hear, you know, last one for if Prophet, by the way, was not supernatural being, he could not hear like things all the time, but only at certain times Allah subhanahu wa you know, uh, you know, revealed to him things that he did not reveal to or other human beings so he passed by and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time made him hear the screams of the people in the grave and he asked Jibreel Islam who are these people why the screaming one person was one who did not clean themselves properly after using the washroom and the other person was the one who used to spread rumors okay and they were getting the punishment in the grave for doing such a thing for spreading rumors okay so check out the news that people bring to you. Why? Why you should do that? Number one is because when you will believe about something without investigating, okay, it could be wrong. It could be wrong. And if you spread it, then you're spreading a false image of that person, about another person. Sometimes also, when you hear something from someone, it's their perception of that person. Maybe that person's actually not like that, right? People assume things about people that's how like if I meet you I'm gonna you know that's my judgment of you and when you relate that to someone else you're actually spoiling the image of that person maybe that person's actually not like that unless that person is you know uh, something that is openly you know has been doing it and it's verified that this is a harmful person in the community then that's another issue but here Allah SWT says so first etiquette that we're learning when we get to know about anyone and this is so common did you know then you know pick up the call or whatsapp message or posting on this thing even like posting on social media about famous people politicians do you know them personally yes there is one ruling that is there that if someone does something openly like it's a public thing and for that person's or that community's betterment you need to speak up like you know for example the thing with that that's happening with palestine you know it's open you know that Israel is doing this. So it is an open thing. And there you can discuss and stuff. But not only, but if you're there just for, again, the purpose of slander and purpose of this thing and this, you know, because everyone's doing it, you got to do it with no, uh, with no, uh, you know, benefit to it. Then again, it's not encouraged in Islam. Okay. Number one, investigate when someone gets to you. I, uh, the I number seven of Surah Al-Hujrat. Okay. Know that among you is the messenger of Allah. In, in between the Sahabas, the messenger was there. Among us, how is the Prophet there? He's not there with us physically, but his actions are there with us, right? His actions are theirs, okay? So if 
if he were to yield to you in many matters, you would surely suffer the consequences. Meaning, what does it mean to you? Do not push people. Like, you know, I bring the news to you and be, and I, you know, I push you to believe me and do something about it. So here, Allah is saying, do not push people and force people. Do not force your judgments on people and take, you know, just because you dislike someone, that doesn't mean your friends need to dislike. But that's how we function as society, right? We, If I dislike someone, I'm going to make other people dislike that person too. And here Allah is saying, do not push people to take actions against other people just because of your personal reasons. Okay? So, and, uh, but, but Allah has endeared faith to you, making it appealing into your hearts. And Allah has made, so here Allah SWT is basically saying, do not force people to do something. And also another, another interpretation of this is that when you have a certain point of view, and there's someone in the lead, like a leader or a teacher or a head or something, give them your opinion. You know, for example, yes, inshallah, we, and opinions are good. Shura, like mashwara or advising, or it, it's a very good thing in Islam. Nasiha is a very good thing, but don't push your opinion. Yeah, we need to take, we need to, you know, let's say, sister, we're going to run this class. We need to study about this. That's a good opinion. But maybe the teacher or that leader knows better. So they'll take your opinion, but if they don't work on it, that doesn't mean they're bad people. Maybe because of their experience, they think that this is good for the community, right? So don't be pushy, basically. This uh, part of the ISO is don't be pushy. Don't push your opinion on people. And you see these things, you know, in the world, they're very beautiful. You know, someone who has all these etiquettes, that person is regarded as someone who is so, you know, so nice, so well-mannered. But this is Islam. This is the etiquette of Rasulullah and the Sahabas. They were not pushy, okay? They were they would investigate, they would not be, believe right away, and they would not spread it, okay? I number nine, next uh, next etiquette. Wa in ta'if wa tani min al mu'minina, min al mu'minina iqtatalu fa aslihu bainahuma. If two groups of believers fight with each other, if two groups or two people have a disagreement between each other, and you get to know about it. What is your, what is your role? You take sides, you pick sides, or you like it, you enjoy the drama, you want to get to know more, or you were like, yeah, what happened? What happened there? Yeah, do you really enjoy it? Let me just bring my cup of tea and, you know, like, yeah, you know, and, or would you just add fuel to the fire? Or what you should do? Allah SWT says, فَأَصْلِهُ You make amends between them. You become a peacemaker among them. You don't enjoy your desires and you know your nafs to loves to enjoy gossip and things like that. You don't do that. Okay. فَإِنْ بَغَتْ أَحْدَهُمَا عَلَى أُخْرَى Okay. فَقَاتِلُ فَقَاتِلُ الَّتِي تَبْغِي So if one party is more harmful doing zulm, oppressing the other, okay, then you stop that. You stop the zulm. See, even if your own, and this means even if your own family is involved. Small example, when kids fight another child, you know, parents sometimes tend to take the side of their own child, even when their child is wrong. Uh, we know how wrong it is when you support your own child in doing wrong. It's so bad for them. Yes, in the face value for that time, you know, your self-respect and all that, and, you know, it's there, but it's so bad. So here, Allah SWT is saying that when two people have a conflict, you be just among them and you you firstly you uh, bring peace among them and you're just in your judgment you investigate again you investigate you see who is a who or sometimes it's not even both it could be that they both are not wrong actually they both are right on their on their side it's just a misunderstanding two people they always even siblings have disagreements right and even parents if siblings have disagreement you know, don't all pick sides just because I know my child, this child is always mischievous. So 100% that person did it. No, you ask both of them what happened, even as a parent should be fair to their child, to their children, among their children. Okay, so do not pick sides when people have conflict. Do not enjoy the conflict and, you know, fuel, become a fuel to the fire. Okay, and be just among people when you're deciding the matter. Okay. فَأَصْلِهُ بَيْنَهُمَا بِلَا عَدْلِ With عَدْل, with, with uh, justice. Okay? فَأَصْلِهُ uh, uh, And 
act justly because why in Allah Allah loves those who are just okay so again you know these things are very appealing to us to pick to support the ones we know for a very long time to so and they even if they're wrong okay even if someone's our friend and we don't like the other person and they got in fight with another person that we even don't like for example and it's so even if our friends are wrong, our family members are wrong, we support them. So last one says no. Here, this is how see justice justice in the society starts from a very you know on a very on a very minor level, like these these kind of situations that arise every single day or every other day for all of us. Okay, and then it goes to a bigger level. So you're not just if you're not just at a, at a, at a smaller level at your own household. Then you will not be just even in, then you know you know forget about Muslim Ummah and building the community and and defending this you know why the Muslims you know I mean of course there are many reasons and things happen by the permission of Allah and there was a time when the Muslims were ruling the world you know so some certain things that creeped into our society and communities and even to small units of families that really that really disturbed the whole system and this is one of them when we are not just when we deal with people, listen to both the sides, stop the one who's oppressing the other side and bring justice between them. Okay, why you should do that? Uh, I number 10, because in Namal Mu'minuna Iqwatun, you guys are, you know, you know, Muslims are brothers and sisters to each other. Yes, we're not biologically related. Okay, we're not coming from the same families, from the same ethnicity and stuff. But why? Because we are, we are, what binds us together is Iman. Because we believe in Allah, that's what makes us all sisters in Islam. You're right. So here, so what should you do? For us, lihu bayna akhwaikum. So here, Allah is saying that make amends. And you know, it's so beautiful how last month I used the words akhwaikum or brothers or sisters uh, here because He's telling us even if you don't dislike the other person and someone is your friend or close to you. But he's your brother. Even if you dislike some habits about them, and you have a bias about them, that person is still, you're bound by them. You're bound with them because you have Iman. Okay, so Iman is what connects us. And the, the you know, the strength of Iman is even sometimes more stronger than blood relations, right? Even if, 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 may, if uh, some of us develop good friendships, it's not because we're related or we go to school. It's Iman, right? This gathering is the gathering of Iman, okay? What the Allah, Allah says again, see, uh, when it comes to your relation with people, the only way you'll do, you'll do, you'll be, you'll do right to them is if you have taqwa, not because you're a good person. You know, the world is going in such a place that just being a good person is not good enough, actually. And the definition of good that is defined by people is also something else now. Okay, so that Allah is merciful to you. And Imam Malik, you know, one of the Imams of, of Islam, before teaching the hadith, he would teach the hadith to his student. And before teaching, he would ask, is there among anyone among you who has cut ties with people or their family members? Because cutting ties with people or family members, okay, Allah SWT does not like it. And that person is not... You know, that's not a quality of a believer. And then if anyone would say yes, he would ask them to leave because, you know, Allah would lift the mercy from that gathering where people, there are people present in that gathering that have cut ties with people. So we should make sure that we make amends. Yes, of course, there are certain times where certain people really have, you can't work with them and they really are harmful. That's a different situation. Okay, but in general, because of small, small things, we should not be cutting ties with people. Then I number 11, Ya ayyuha ladhina amanu, la yasqar qawmim mim qawmin. Do not make fun of other people. Do not laugh at other people. Do not mock at other people. Why? Firstly, why do people mock other people? The reason why they mock other people because they think they're better, right? You think you're better in your speech, in your ethnicity, in your race, in your mannerism, in your looks, in your material possessions, okay? So this is the reason that people mock other people. Asa an yakunu khayran, khayran minhum, okay? Because the one you're mocking, it could be that they're actually better than you in the sight of Allah and in general. 
as human beings. Okay? And وَلَا نِسَاءٌ مِن نِسَاءٍ And here Allah specifically mentions women because uh, beautiful women can be engaged in such behaviors of a lot of uh, mocking and laughing and they're making fun of people. And even on small things like this person just has, if you go in material position, they're dressed in this way, they're wearing this brand, they have this bag, they have this kind of house, they have this car, this and that, and you make fun of other people. Or you, you don't even make, sometimes it's not even uh, making fun of other people. Wala tell me do. And fusakum, meeting jesters. What is lumaza? Eye gestures, rolling your eyes at people, or body language. Sometimes it's not even rolling the eyes. Body language is such facial gestures that someone who is arrogant, they walk a certain way. There is like even you know like um, kibar or you know um, it's it's like in uh, linguistically. Also means the walk of a horse. You know how the horse walks so they have that gait that and like elegantly and you know like so you can see in the body language certain people, an arrogant person versus a humble person how they walk. Sometimes it's not even words. Sometimes it's not even even I. It's just the way you walk. Okay, so here last night saying that do not even do eye gestures do by your movement. By or do not look down upon people because they might be better than you. Okay? Wala tanabazu bil al And do not call people by names, name calling, like body shaming, for example. It's come sometimes very common in cultures to body shame someone, calling them, you know, bigger in size or smaller in size, shorter, or taller, this hair color, this skin color. So this all comes under nicknames. And we know uh, from, for example, uh, and even calling people by their, the lineage, the race they come from, the family. For example, uh, Prophet Sam's wife, Safiya, she was the, uh, she was, uh, her background was Jewish. She was the, uh, she was a daughter of a Jewish man. So people would call her Yahudi or things like that. So this is name calling. And Prophet uh, stop people from doing something like that. And also calling people names based on their actions. You know, sometimes some person did something, they stole, or they cheated in the exam sometimes, and someone's friends caught them. And now they always go like, hey, cheater. You know, this person's like this, this person. You know, what if they repented to Allah and they don't know? Like, yes, a lot, and a lot of the times people laugh off. You know how we have a culture that people laugh it off? Inside, they're like very upset, but they want to be cool in front of people and pretend that things don't hurt them, but it's actually really hurting them from the inside. Okay, so and you and we think that oh, it's cool, it's all good, it's all good. It's the it's the it's trying to be cool. You know, this is not cool. This is very uncool. You make people feel uncomfortable by your comments. Okay, and trying to uh, you know insult and um and from the hadith of the Prophet Sallam. Uh, uh, Prophet said, if a man says to his brother, O kafir, or disbeliever, then surely one of them is such, meaning a kafir, the one who calls the other person is the one who's, who is the, that, that name. So calling people even like in Islam, kafir, this person is kafir, this group is munafiq, hypocrites, first you cannot call someone a hypocrite. Yes, uh, actions can have uh, some sort of hypocrisy in them. You're not allowed to call people a disbeliever, a kafir, a hypocrite, just throwing these words out so casually, okay? So this is all in al-qab. These are all in name. These things all come in name calling. Then Prophet said, verily, verily, among the major signs, uh, sins is that a man curses his own parents. So the Sahabas asked, O Messenger of Allah, how can a man curse his own parents? The Prophet said, he insults the father of another man and in return, that man insults his father. So do not insult other people's parents because that person will also insult your parents and then you're basically indirectly getting your parents insulted. Can happen in families, can happen in in-laws. You know, people attack. So do not throw in personal attacks on people. So and especially in work culture, in schools, at universities and gatherings, people might laugh it off because they want to act cool. But in fact, they're very hurt. They're very disturbed. Your actions might be hurting a person for a long, long time. 
and we again unknowingly are accumulating so many sins without even knowing you know you have heard a creation of an abd of allah and that's a very this is this is a deed you know that person will not enter jannah the one who has heard taken away rights of people okay yeah you nazina amanu allah says i number 12 so these are all rulings for us we have to be very entering the month of ramadan let's cleanse our personality and character too yes ibadah of course focuses the month of mercy it's but it is also a time for us to you know things that we do you know you might be fasting and you know doing for going for taraweeh reading the quran and at the same time doing all of these things at home even parents calling their children you stole that day and then you stole don't do it and they keep reminding once i'm keeping up you know keep reminding a person about something bad they did it's so hurtful like they have repented they don't they don't like it they're ashamed of it and we keep doing it so do please uh, we should refrain from doing something like this okay so you know oh oh believers do not stay away from bad assumptions okay assuming about people because in the bad the zanni is because some of the um some of these um assumptions lead to sins okay now for example someone came to you you said salam you didn't hear reply oh my god that person didn't reply back to my salam yeah maybe they didn't hear it okay or maybe they said it you didn't hear it right they replied to you but assuming automatically just jumping to conclusion you know she did like this to me because you know she walked away like this because i don't think she likes me anymore or you know because she has this so assumptions in your mind okay why is why are stay away from too many assumptions when you don't have factual evidence about something okay again rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Min husni islam il mar'i the beauty of a, a man's character is or a person's character is tark, uh, ma la yani, that he leaves that doesn't concern him meaning mind your own business okay in short the one who keeps to themselves if it doesn't concern you why you want to know about it why you want to indulge your mind your mind should be more used for more better things right the the mind of a person who is who who is wasteful who waste their time is is the one who is engaged in all of this so whenever a thought about a person comes you brush it off the word ijtanibu is used it's the same word that is used when allah talks about alcohol too stay away from alcohol so certain things these actions yes we're doing like we're staying away from the major these are major things too so why you should not indulge in assumptions okay is that first the assumptions about allah so have good assumption about Allah. Well, Allah will never, Allah will never forgive me. How do you know? That means you don't believe that Allah is Ar-Rahman. That is his quality. Allah can give, forgive any sins, as many sins. Or Allah, I know Allah will not give this to me. Well, I've made so much dua, but Allah never gave me this in the past. Why would I get it now? So these are bad assumptions about Allah. So first, the person should refrain from having uh, evil assumptions about Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his, his magnificence is beyond our imagination. His qualities, his attributes are beyond our imagination. Okay, so uh, Prophet said, Verily, thinking well about Allah is a part of, of excellent worship of Allah. Having good assumption about Allah is also ibadah. Just like we pray, just like we fast, we read Quran. So have good assumptions. Then a person should not uh, indulge in uh, as in uh, assumptions because what's going to happen next because assumptions will lead you to act upon them so you're assuming about someone now you're curious the next thing you'll do is suggest us like spy you want to know more you go to their profile you search them up you go where they have been what a waste of time firstly complete waste of time and then building more assumptions Okay, so here Allah says, do not uh, engage in eavesdropping, uh, you know, um, spying on people, getting to know, you know, are, you know, asking around, what did they do? What did they say about me? What did they... A lot of the times, it's not even, we want to know what people said about us. And this is the reason why we do certain things. Okay. And the third thing this can lead to 
ولا يقتب بعدكم بعدا do not backbite so one so one thing leads to another bad assumption leads you to curiosity you know when you are looking around finding evidence of that and the third thing that happens you say it to other people so do not yaqtab what is yaqtab comes from riba has anyone heard heard the word riba riba means backbiting comes from the word ghaib which is unseen or like that person is not is ghaib he's not there they're not there and you talk about them so the, what is the definition of backbiting Zik, uh, zikruka akhaka saying saying something about your brother or sister bima yakrahu idha balagha that that person will dislike when they hear about it okay so mentioning something about a about someone that they will dislike okay and prophet was asked he said uh, prophet said do you know what backbiting is and the the uh, the the sahabas replied allah allah and his messenger know best the prophet said to mention your brother in a way he dislikes like you say something about someone you know they're not going to like it and the sahabas asked what if it's actually true what if they actually do it then uh, the prophet said that exactly is backbiting even if that's true about them and they do it and you tell other people in their absence that's backbiting and if it's something that is untrue then that's slander that's even worse okay and what is backbiting backbiting is like Allah Subhanahu wa says ayuhibbu ahadukum an ya'kulu lahma aqihi do you like that you eat the the uh, the meat of your akhihi maytan fa akra and you hate it basically backbiting is equated or equal to you know someone you know your someone related to you has passed away and you cut them off and you eat them this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is how disgusting basically you hate it this is how you know so if any time a person wants to indulge in something like that has an urge to say something about someone they should bring this picture in mind this is backbiting again allah says what the allah have the conscience of allah in allah rahim he is the most forgiving if you turn back to what you're doing now some things i like to go a little bit into backbiting but some things about backbiting is that um firstly a believer is the one from whose tongue and hand another person is safe so if people don't see feel safe around you they're scared for their respect there is that right even for the sake of comedy you know some people do stand-up comedy and stuff like that it's not cool when you're throwing jokes at other people or talking behind their back okay then riba is also uh in in at the time of isra wal miraj you know when the prophet went to the heavens up in the heavens uh he uh, when the prophet said when i was taken on the night journey i passed by some people who had metal hooks on their hands so they had claws of metal in their hands and they were clawing their faces they were scratching their faces and chest i said who are these people or jibril and jibril alayhi salam said these are the ones who eat the flesh basically they're the ones who do backbiting so backbiting riba is a major sin in islam okay what does it do it it spoils the reputation of another person now what happens if you hear someone backbiting and you're you're listening you're witnessing that so if you're in a position to defend defend them because Prophet said whoever defends the reputation of his brother allah will defend his face on the day of judgment from the hellfire so if you're in a position to defend someone you defend them and if you don't know what to do you make a face that you don't like it because listening to backbiting is as if you're doing it you're part of it so sometimes you don't agree with it so what you have to do you get away from that situation okay and you know backbiting again leads to a lot of fitna a lot of problems in the society how because now a whole bunch of people are sitting around talking ill about another person and spoiling their reputation and respect and again it does not mean that just because you know if it's true a lot of the things we talk how do we justify it's true about them it's they actually do this i witness seeing them doing this bad action for example but that's still backbiting and if it's not something that is untrue then it's slander like the slander of aisha radiallahu anha right so when she didn't do something and people blamed her for doing something right so we have to be very careful about backbiting 
okay as a society as a whole the things that we say about and uh someone and lastly so we're um uh, a little bit ahead of you know ahead of time so inshallah lastly ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin aw unsa aw uh, oh people allah has created you as male and female okay wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila and allah has made you in groups so it doesn't, that means Allah has made you to different nations, ethn different ethnicities. Why has Allah made us different? Because so we can recognize each other. If we all were the same, how would we know who is who? Is who? So the way we look, the places we come from, it's actually the beauty of Islam and the beauty of Allah's creation. So it's for let uh, So you know each other not and not become racist human beings. Okay? No one is above, no race, no, you know, class. Or how people divide each other in class system, whatever. Not no one is better than the other person except inna akramakum and Allahi atqakum. The only person who is actually better in the sight of Allah is the one who has more taqwa consciousness. This is Allah's way of measuring people. Not because someone's beautiful, someone's attractive, someone's white, someone's black, someone's yellow, someone's green, whatever. Whatever the people that the term they come up with, do not be racist. Who was the first racist? Shaitan. He was racist. He said, I'm from fire, he's from clay, I'm better. Right? Because of the way I'm created. This is what he did. And he now, even till date and till the end of times, this is a big part that he puts in human beings, which is to judge people based on where they come from okay so here last one that says do not do that okay and uh, inshallah bismillah so yeah the rest of the surah i go there i go on the last eye a last one that says in allah i number 18 in allah ya'lamu ghayb as samawati wal ard allah knows everything in the heavens and the earth Whatever you do, in Allahu basirun bima ta'amalun, Allah knows all your actions. Allah knows all your deeds, you know, all your intentions on your thoughts. So control your thoughts, control your actions, you know, become better human being according to the Quran and Sunnah. Okay, so all of the akhlaq that Allah SWT taught us through Surah Hujrat, and Allah SWT gave us the ability to apply it as the month of Ramadan approaches, let us cleanse our character. Okay? Okay, Allahumma ahsanta khalki fahassin kuluki. Oh, Allah, make my correct character. It's a dua. It's actually a dua when you look at the mirror, but it's also a dua. Oh, Allah, just like how you made my outer self beautiful, make my inner self beautiful too. So this is our time to purify, make ourselves better, be careful of all the things that we do. You know, subhanAllah, we are engaged in so many things that we do use. These are useless deeds. These are useless deeds and useless sins, right? That we are so, so be cognizant of other people. This is how you will, you have to give your rights of Allah and you have to give your rights of people. Okay, so may Allah SWT may beautify all our character, our dealings with each other, bring love between each other, foster the love, okay, bring kindness among each other. And you know, and one of the main things that people will enter in Jahannam is through their tongues. So tongue is a way that, you know, so may Allah SWT beautify and purify our tongues so we only utter words that are beneficial and also uh, limit our speech. If you say, if you talk too much, then there are chances that things will slip out that you don't want. So limit your speech, get into the habit of that as we enter the month of Ramadan. Wet your tongues with the zikr of Allah. You you know, get into the habit now actually, Shaban. Prophet, this is the month of Shaban. Prophet would engage in all the activities that he wants to do in Ramadan. Okay, as mentioned in Ramadan, you're not going to become, the moment the, the Hilal is, you know, uh, you know, cited, you're going to become a super changed, natural, supernatural human being. No, the habits that you have, you're going to carry forward. So start changing the habits now. Your assumption, the, it starts with an assumption. Even when it comes to backbiting, it leaves, you know, small things like how for Zina, for example, it says don't talk to the opposite gender. It starts from there. You'll talk, then you'll chat. That you want to meet it's just a group you know first group chat then it's just a coffee and then so on and so forth so don't don't even entertain bad thoughts about another person brush it off you don't know it it doesn't concern you or if something someone comes with you meant matter investigate it yes a, an important thing here is a lot of people ask 
what if something is really major and I need to tell something that someone has done back to me? Yes, talking to a therapist, talking to an imam, to going to someone that you need to go to for help and telling them about something, that is allowed. That is this, but doing in public, sitting with a bunch of people, they're not gonna, or every person you meet, you start backbiting about this, this one person or what they did to you, what all the bad they did to you, this is not allowed. But if someone, you know, a scholar, an imam, a therapist, a doctor, whoever, or some advisor in the community, you need to say something to, and they are going to really help you, and you're going for an intention, uh, you know, intention to seek help, this is allowed. You can do that. So inshallah, bismillah, we will end here. And we have a bunch of announcements of things that we'll do. So we'll end. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa itubu ilayk. So inshallah, bismillah, we have a couple of announcements for you. And after that, inshallah, we will go upstairs and we will have our activity with Sister Saima. She's sitting among us. Mm -hmm. She will hold for us, inshallah. She is the one who, uh, she has her own henna business. So a much like a beautiful businesswoman she is that may Allah SWT, you know, accepted from her. She put all of this us for all of you guys. So inshallah, you'll enjoy the activity. And it will be followed after with food, yeah, with asr, salah, and then food, inshallah. So this is our schedule. And then inshallah, then we can take over. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, for attending. I hope you guys benefited. Uh, from this gathering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obviously this is also the best time to learn but also make dua uh, whenever uh, you know gathering